Well, I've gotten a ton of recent subscribers to this channel over the last few months. So today I, I want to welcome you who are new, but I want to get back to some basics. And one of the biggest questions, particularly for you newbies, are what the heck are lectins and why should I be worried about them? Now, welcome. I'm, of course, known for lectins, but if you've never heard of them or why you ought to be interested in them, this is for you. And if you know all about them, stick around. You might learn some more fun facts. All right, so what the heck are lectins? Lectins are proteins that are used by plants and actually also animals, as a defense system. Uh, plants were here first. They had it great before animals arrived because, quite frankly, no one wanted to eat them. Now, when animals arrived and insects were the first animals, plant predators, uh, plants couldn't run, they couldn't hide, they couldn't fight, but they're chemists of incredible ability. So they use chemical biological warfare to convince an animal that it might not be a good idea to eat them or their babies, their seeds. And they have multiple defense mechanisms. They make lectins as one of those, but there are others. Many of you are familiar with oxalates, which is another plant defense mechanism. There are tannins, there are glycosides, we could go on and on. But I became fascinated with lectins because lectins are proteins that are sugar molecule seeking proteins. They are specifically looking for classes of sugar molecules which are called sialic acids. Now, don't let the word acid fool you. These are sugar molecules. They're sometimes called glycans. We have these sugar molecules in the lining of our gut wall. We have these sugar molecules in the lining of our blood vessels. We have them lining our blood-brain barrier. We have them lining our joint surfaces. And we even have them in our myelin sheath, the insulation around nerves. And we have them in the space where one nerve talks to the next nerve. And that space is full of these sugar molecules. Okay, so what? Well, the evidence is, and the evidence is actually very impressive, that lectins are designed by the plant to try to attach to these sugar molecules. And in beautiful work done by the pediatric gastroenterologist, Dr. Alessio Fizzano, who's now at Harvard, he's shown that the lectin gluten, yes, gluten is a lectin, wants to attach to the wall of your gut and make a compound called zonulin. Zonulin then attaches to another receptor and it breaks the tight junctions that hold the wall of our gut together. And when those tight junctions are broken, we now have a gap in the wall of your gut separating everything that you swallowed and all your microbiome from you. And through that gap, lectins can get through, which are foreign proteins, and lectins can bind to sugar molecules in the wall of your blood vessel, in your joints, in your blood-brain barrier, in your myelin sheath, and literally act like a splinter. And if anyone's ever gotten a splinter under their finger or their skin, they know it gets all red. That red is inflammation. That's your white blood cells attacking that foreign body. And that same process takes place. And that's why lectins are so mischievous. So why would a plant do this? Well, from a plant logic, if that animal 
that's eating plants or plant babies that have lectins, and that animal feels bad, if that animal hurts, if that animal can't move, then that animal learns very rapidly not to eat those plants or that plant baby. In fact, we think that lectins were originally designed to paralyze the insect by binding to the nerve junctions and the insect couldn't move. We know that plants, when an insect is eating on one part of a tree, produce lots and lots of lectins very rapidly within a few minutes on the other side of the tree just to get ready for that insect. So this is a plant system protecting against predation. Now, the reason I got so interested in it is my research as an undergraduate at Yale was on the foods that our ancient ancestors ate. And one of the things that was startling was that no human being actually ate grains or beans until about 12,000 years ago during the agricultural revolution. And what's interesting is grains and beans are two of the largest sources of lectins in our diet. And human beings were actually about six feet tall up until agriculture started. And we actually shrunk about a foot in 2,000 years after agriculture started. Just once again shows you the devastating effect of lectins in our diet. Now, we've been eating these things for a long time. Another class of lectins came from the New World. Now, believe it or not, all of us were originally from Asia, Africa, or Europe. Even Native Americans were actually from Asia. And so none of us were exposed to New World plants until about 500 years ago when Columbus started Colombian trade. And it just so happens there are multiple New World plants like corn, like quinoa, like the nightshade family, tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, potatoes, which we had never encountered as a species until 500 years ago. And getting to know those new plants, those new lectins in 500 years is like speed dating and evolution. And so many of our common foods have these lectins in them. And that's why the more we can avoid these, or more importantly, learn how to detoxify them by fermentation, by pressure cooking, the better off we're going to be. Now, many people say, well, now hold on. There are cultures that eat beans, that eat grains, and whole beans and grains are great for you, and they don't seem to have any problem. What gives? Well, if you look at those cultures, one of the things that's remarkable is things that I call the deadly disruptors happened to us beginning about 50 years ago. The biggest deadly disruptor were broad-spectrum antibiotics. There were no broad-spectrum antibiotics until the 1970s. They were introduced when I was in medical school. Broad-spectrum antibiotics are miraculous, but we had no idea they actually killed off our gut microbiome. So what? We have a major defense system against plant lectins. And that is our gut microbiome actually enjoys eating plant lectins. They were designed to eat them. There are actually gluten-eating bacteria. There are actually oxalate-eating bacteria. And it makes sense. A plant has a system of defense, and an animal has a system of defense, and you've basically got balance of powers. We've unfortunately knocked out that system of defense. We used to have a lot of acid in our stomach, and acid breaks down proteins. Now, the most widely purchased product in pharmacies are acid-reducing drugs. So we've lost that protection. Third, biggest selling pharmaceutical are NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents. 
These are literally like swallowing hand grenades. They produce holes in the wall of your gut that these compounds can then go through, starting inflammation. And study after study shows that the more NSAIDs you take, the more pain you will have that will make you take more NSAIDs that will cause more damage to the wall of your gut and its perpetual cycle. So these are part of the deadly disruptors. Finally, I can't miss telling you about Roundup, whose active ingredient is glyphosate. It's only been around 50 years. We had no idea that glyphosate kills off bacteria in your gut. And glyphosate, in and of itself, can cause leaky gut. So we have had, unfortunately, our entire defense against lectins destroyed by our modern lifestyle. And when I see patients in my office, one of the fascinating things is we can actually measure people's antibodies to lectins, like gluten, like wheat germagglutin, and multiple other lectins. And it's amazing that all of my patients have these antibodies. So it's a real thing. It's not conjecture on my part. It's been proven by Dr. Fasano over and over again. So that's why lectins are so mischievous. And that's why I spend so much time teaching you either how to avoid them, where they're hiding, or how to detoxify them. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast, you're definitely going to want to see this one. And I found out by accident after, you know, shortly after going lectin free, I just said to myself one day, wait a minute, I haven't had a headache like in two months. And I realized that it was the lectins and the sugar that was causing these headaches.